Welcome to the Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching YouTube channel where we help people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, substances I once struggled with. The purpose of today's video is going to be discussing marijuana withdrawal symptoms. I recently held a poll on the channel where I asked our viewers, what were your worst symptoms of withdrawal when it came to weed? 37% uh, of people reported insomnia, 4% reported body aches and pains, 6% reported nausea, and the other 45% reported anxiety and depression. And in today's video, I'm going to go through the comment section and read off some other things that people were struggling with. The purpose of this video is to validate THC as a drug that can have both physical and psychological withdrawal <sighs> symptoms. So many times among the 420 community, we see people saying, oh, that's ridiculous. You can't be physically addicted to marijuana. There's no such thing as physical withdrawal. And that's simply not true. And this is a huge disservice or discredit to everyone who is suffering with these symptoms. The purpose of this video isn't to scare you when it comes to quitting. It's to validate what you're going through and allow you to know that you're not alone. So let's jump right into this comment section here. John Neal, insomnia and depression. I've been sober for a year and a half now, and I'm not missing it. It feels good to enjoy life without a delusional state of mind. Stay strong, everyone. I believe in you all. We always get great support like this here on our channel when it comes to people quitting. Another user commented, for me, it's been body aches and just an overall feeling of discomfort and kind of feeling out of it. Perhaps she is describing brain fog. The insomnia hasn't been so bad, actually, perhaps because I still do regular exercise, such as taking long walks, which does help with sleep. And guys, doing regular exercise is one of the best things when it comes to insomnia and THC withdrawal. She does say, however, the first three days, I did wake up at least two to three times drenched in sweat, currently on day 10. And it's very, very common with the sweating to occur in the first three to seven days. I remember bringing a change of clothes to work with me because I was sweating so much. Mostly it would happen at night. This is just your body detoxing. Your body's quite literally pumping THC out of your fat cells. So the sweating is very normal. Not to mention your endocannabinoid system plays a large role in body temperature regulation. So when you first quit, getting the chills, being overly hot, overly cold, very, very normal because of that dysregulation in your endocannabinoid system. David Young, I never had a problem with the physical symptoms. The cravings were what drove me insane, if I'm going to be honest. Another user comments, for real, bro. Uh, Jesse, on day two, I mostly only see benefits. More energy, more clarity. My personality is more expressive. A lot more motivation. I get cravings, but I don't want to lose this good feeling. It's harder to sleep, but I feel so much more rested, even on less sleep than when I was smoking. This is very common. Uh, it has been studied that THC disrupts our REM sleep cycle. Now, some sources would argue how important is REM sleep. In my opinion, it's very important. From what I understand about REM sleep, this is where your brain categorizes and orga organizes things that have happened to you throughout the day. So this is your brain's chance of organizing and getting you prepared for the next day. So it makes sense. If his sleep quality is improving, even though he's getting less sleep, of course, Jesse's feeling better. Josh, 48 days weed free here. Awesome. The only issues I had were insomnia with occasional night sweats, unstable mental health, and a little bit of inconsistency with my appetite. It's funny because a lot of people are quitting. We ran another poll and I asked, what was the number one reason why you're quitting? And they said, for better mental health. So don't let that scare you. It's not that people's mental health declines when they start quitting weed in most cases. They already had mental health issues going into the quitting process, and they started to view weed as a, maybe a problem. 
um, appetite, of course. I believe I still have some sort of brain fog or memory issues, which I'm hoping will go away in the coming months, but it could be other things. Also, my sleep isn't exactly where I want it to be yet, but I do get enough, and I'm dreaming again, which I like. If you are trying to stop, just keep at it. And also try using a calendar you see to mark off the days you've quit that seem to help keep me going. Excellent advice, excellent input. Appetite is something we're going to talk about a little bit more in a little bit. We have someone here, Maria Soul, day two. Woke up with intense nausea this morning, dry heaving. Feeling kind of like I have a hangover. Headaches, very common. Nausea, loose bowels. We often hear people report diarrhea and fatigue. Going to try and get some early rest tonight. I always tell people when you first quit smoking weed, you want to view it as if you have the flu. The first two weeks, just treat yourself as if you're sick. You want to get plenty of rest. You want to hydrate. Maybe you do some light exercise, but really this is a time to provide your body with an environment that it can heal. And I promise it does get better. Another user, Social, says, if it wasn't for the insomnia, I'd probably quit and start up again every so often. It's the thought of that insomnia and being up till 8 a.m. in the morning that I never want to go back to again. Along with that, just the sheer eating changes, like waking up and not being able to eat any food for hours on end till my body demands and accepts it's time to eat. Besides that, it's been pretty easy for me. Day 11, no cravings, sleeping normal again, and eating normal. I forgot how nice it feels to wake up and have breakfast, a nice big breakfast. When you're on that Mary Jane, you wake up and don't want to eat. I get my flour out and I just medicate. Only after medication was I able to tolerate eating. This is no longer the case. I can actually vouch that all after quitting flour and adult media content, it it isn't even on my mind anymore. I've never been a drinker or energy drink, so I'm good with that. Thanks, Doc, for everything you do. I appreciate you for being part of our community and sharing your experience. And look at that, guys. 11 days, and this person is doing so much better. One of the common things I tell people is there is an end to the withdrawal symptoms. These will end. Uh, Addiction can be indefinite. Some people go their whole lives struggling and battling addiction and never get a chance to enjoy the, the good aspects of sobriety and recovery. Another individual says, inability to get drawn into something enough to distract yourself from the urge absolutely made me panic when I first quit cannabis. So this is an individual that was suffering from that lack of motivation. There was probably some anhedonia, which is a common withdrawal symptom. It's this overwhelming feeling of kind of depression, and it prevents us from getting engaged again. Eventually, as we go through our sobriety process, those feelings of engagement and motivation, they do come back. Of course, Luke Davis mentions weird, vivid dreams, waking up every couple of hours completely soaked soaked in sweat and very hungry. I've been off weed for three weeks after smoking every day for 19 years. Congratulations, Luke. I remember the vivid dreams like it was yesterday. When I would go to bed, I would tell myself, okay, Frank, you're going to the movies tonight. And I didn't know if I was going to see an action movie, a horror film, a comedy. They were wild, wild dreams. I actually grew to enjoy them, but I do empathize with people who have PTSD where this might be a big problem for them. I I do understand that. James Dean, I'm on day two. I've quit before and relapsed, but whenever I quit, I get crazy worrying thoughts about people close to me dying, and that made me relapse last time. Woke up this morning on day two. I actually slept okay last night, no dreams, and woke up once with the worst sweats. This morning, my head is really sore, and I know the worst has yet to come, but I'm absolutely done with this stuff. Thanks, Dr. Frank. You're a top guy. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And your headspace is in the right spot. You got to get through 72. Get through those first three days. We have another person. The night sweats. If I could just sleep in peace, everything else would be fine. There is definitely validity to this comment. You have to remember, a lot of these withdrawal symptoms and physical changes that you're feeling, 
is because of a lack of sleep. When we suffer from insomnia, when we're going through the early stages of withdrawal, that insomnia and that lack of sleep has the ability to impact multiple aspects of our life physically and mentally. The good news is once your sleep starts to re-regulate and get better, a lot of those other physical withdrawal symptoms start to improve. Sleep is so important for our overall health. So important. And guys, I'll put some videos in the pinned comment below in the video description that will go into more depth about how to manage the insomnia, how to manage the appetite changes. Someone else, Abba says, it's amazing to hear everyone else is getting cravings. That crap should make you run a mile. Yeah, cravings are intense. I always viewed cravings as an energy. And I would always say to myself, it's up to me what I'm going to do with this energy. Am I going to put it into a drug or am I going to put it into making YouTube videos? Am I going to put it into my relationships, my career? Cravings are nothing more than an energy and a need for your brain to be doing something, to be engaged in something. It's up to you what you engage with. Oh, yeah, yeah, states, to be honest, I didn't really feel any harsh symptoms. I went through it with minor symptoms, if even that. The hardest part was the cravings because I enjoyed weed. 64 days clean. I'm sure they did enjoy weed, but there must have been a reason why you quit. I think a lot of times in active addiction, we, we view it as we're giving something up. And for a lot of people on this channel, if you're viewing weed as something that you're giving up, you're going to have really intense cravings and you're going to have a hard time. But if you view it as something that no longer serves you a purpose, it becomes much easier to quit. And honestly, with that mindset, I think it makes for much more manageable cravings. Another user says, feeling wacky and the whole wake up every couple hours drenched in sweat, drenched, drenched in sweat shaking with the chills. Yep. Another person says, I had some irritability days two to four, but here I am on day seven and I feel like I'm never going back. My dreams are still crazy as all heck though. HWL Gaming. I smoked daily for two years. I quit three weeks ago and I feel amazing now. Three weeks in and look at these improvements. Weed changed me, honestly. I'm feeling like my old self again. The only symptoms I had were a minor headache for a few days, but I'm so glad I made the decision to give it up. I feel great. It's amazing seeing these, these testimonials from people and how their life is improving for the better after giving up marijuana. Really, really interesting. Aaron says, feeling like a burden to my family for even getting to this point was the worst part for me. Guilt is a common withdrawal symptom from any substance. And all I say to these people when they're dealing with this and how to cope with guilt, that wasn't you. That was a version of you that was under the influence of a drug, of a substance. I know you didn't mean to put your family through that. And as long as you continue to improve, as long as you continue to do better, your family is going to see that too. And that's really the best cure for that guilt is just doing better and better with each passing day. Where we get stuck is when that addictive voice locks into those feelings of guilt, makes us feel really stressed and down about it. And then that addictive voice says, hey, I know what can make you feel better. Why don't you go smoke some weed? Something to watch out for. Jimmy, could have been the hyperemesis episodes of my CHS. Could have been the withdrawals after months of taking a puff of wax pen every 10 minutes. We see bad withdrawal symptoms when it comes to carts, guys. Either way, the insomnia was the worst. Just spent the night going in and out of the hot shower for some relief. Another user replied, oh my God, going through the exact same thing. For those of you guys suffering with major appetite issues or appetite changes or nausea, you might be struggling with the early stages of cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. And we're going to make a whole separate video about the withdrawal symptoms from that. But this is kind of like another level of withdrawal in THC addiction that can lead to some pretty harsh stuff. So, Jimmy, it's really good that you're, you're quitting because I think you're catching this in the early stage. And I think you're going to prevent some major problems down the road by quitting now. 
Nick Justice comments, surprisingly, I haven't had much of an issue sleeping. My appetite hasn't been thrown off enough to be noticeable, and my anxiety levels really haven't changed. I just find myself with some cravings here and there, which the cravings eventually pass, guys. Took one hit off my pen after three days of no smoking, and honestly, don't feel like I need it. Now I just have to prove that to myself. I almost feel like I over-rationalize how hard it would be to not having it. Has anyone else experienced this? Nick, I think this is most people. We all have fear when it comes to quitting an addiction, false expectations appearing real. And once we see that many of those expectations were false, quitting becomes much, much easier. The idea of quitting for many people is actually much more overwhelming than the quitting process itself. Another uh, community member comments, currently struggling to keep my head in a good place, very upset and easily angered. School has been more challenging than ever, even though I know I'm doing good in school and making progress in my sobriety. I feel like a failure. It's hard, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to relapse. Quitting is hard. Getting sober can be hard. It's a process. But at least we're partaking in a process that's building us up versus tearing us down. Uh, Make no mistake about it. Maintaining an addiction is also hard. Maintaining an addiction also comes with feelings of feeling like a failure. So I would say to this community member, you're on the right path. And if you keep that positive mindset, you're going to achieve success. Jessica B., I've quit smoking cigarettes a bunch of times. I only recall the irritability, cravings, but after a few days, that was gone. I just recently quit vaping, and man, let me tell you, that's messed with my head. Cravings lasted longer. I felt more depressed, anxious, and antisocial. I'm on day seven, though, and doing much, much better. Nicotine withdrawal, Jessica, I know, especially with the vaping and the higher concentrations of nicotine, I know. Kate Jones, the nonstop vomiting and diarrhea is what's doing it for me, fam. I had dreams of it because I've been so sick. I even woke up feeling a bit better like I had medicated. But as soon as I sat up in bed, the nausea and dry heaving started again. I would say there's a really good chance this person is struggling with that second or third degree of cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. And the sad thing is so many times when people struggle with this, they think weed is a solution to these problems because temporarily at least it provides relief. But really what smoking weed is doing is just keeping you trapped in this constant cycle of illness. Lord Zord, I've been weed free for over two months, but I've recently been having these dreams of getting high and smoking. The mind plays games with us. It sure does. No matter whether we're quitting weed, vaping, nicotine, alcohol, very, very, very common to have dreams of relapse. Addiction will do anything it can to try and suck you back in. Anything it can. So if it can't get to you when you're awake, it's going to try its best to get to you when you're asleep. Not sure if loss of appetite counts as nausea, but for about two weeks I had that and it was pretty brutal. To anyone who says there's not a physical dependence or a physical addiction, I'm here to prove to you through user testimonial that that is not true. And guys, if you're struggling with this, don't let people degrade or downplay your experience. It's a valid experience. The two I experienced the most, says the drum knight, were insomnia and loss of appetite. Stephanie says, the first four to five days, I usually feel like absolute hell. Terrible insomnia, no appetite, nausea, dizziness, accompanied by severe brain fog, anxiety, irritability, hopelessness. Of course, we all feel that when we first quit an addiction and anger. I'm six weeks clean and sober now, and the only symptom lingering is some breathlessness and anxiety. But I'm not sure if that's to do with THC withdrawal, myocarditis, after COVID. Does anyone else still experience anxiety after six weeks? Or I do have some emotional meltdowns as well, but they are getting better. Yeah, that could have to do with COVID. THC also does regulate circadian rhythm, or I'm sorry, our heartbeat, myocardial rhythm and whatnot. And yeah, if you're getting 
uh, increased heart rate that can trigger anxiety and panic attacks. And sometimes people will take medication or do supplementation to help with that. And that that can be a fix. So something to, to look into, Stephanie, maybe speak with a cardiologist. Um, Ricardo, I spend usually two hours to get to sleep when I don't smoke. It's super frustrating. Do you suggest the use of melatonin? You can definitely try and supplement with something like melatonin or ZMA. I don't think it's necessary though, in my opinion. Just let your body heal and rebalance. Although many supplements can help people. And if taking a supplement is a solution for you, well, by all means, go for it. Jake Hurst, I feel the anxiety and depression will hit hard once I start quitting. Had some intense bouts of depression, though, on days two or three. Very, very, very normal. Day 17, insomnia, says Lucky Rabbit. However, my mood is lighthearted and easygoing. Apparently, I'm a completely different person according to my family and friends. I feel like I'm singing in the rain. Yeah, many times the benefits that we experience after we quit THC greatly outweigh any of the minor inconveniences that we go through when it comes to the withdrawal symptoms. Mr. Ware, intense sweating and sometimes nausea, but I couldn't tell if it was from my weed withdrawal or the GERD. Here's the interesting thing. A lot of people who suffer from CHS have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, GERD, fungal infections inside the GI tract. So was the GERD maybe a symptom of THC use or were you self-medicating with THC to help with the GERD? Because weed is biphasic. Too much, it can cause gastrointestinal problems. Too little, it does nothing in just the right amount. For some people, it's the perfect medication. Interesting scenario, right? Zach says, I've smoked every day for years and I was able to drop it and didn't have any symptoms other than a little bit of irritability for like a day and a half. I guess I'm lucky, but my reason for quitting was that I just didn't want to smoke anymore. So that may have something to do with it. Many of the people who quit successfully, they do that because they decided they want to. They wake up and they say, I've made a decision and I'm going to stick to it. Guys, I hope this video validates some of the things that you've been going through. Why don't you follow me into the video description and the pinned comment to check out my videos on THC withdrawal to help you manage each of these different problems. I'll see you there.